Well, the pandemic had an, eff an, an, an effect that we all know. We know many more words than we used to know some months ago. Uh, many words are on public health, but also mm, words about technology. Uh, for instance, all my pathology is now uh, about uh, BPM, virtual uh, private networks, about teleworking, and all these uh, new technology has come to stay. So I would say yes, there is a clear impact that the pandemic, uh, positive in the impact that the pandemic has uh, shown how important is technology. And uh, this technology like uh, teleworking, uh, secondary opinion by telemedicine or telepathology is already being used as a natural in a natural way. And it wasn't like that only one year ago. No? In my opinion, uh, artificial intelligence is, is going to be uh, developing a lot in the next few months or next uh, few years because um, uh, we are becoming aware that in many, in many parts of our specialties, for instance, in um, cancer of the prostate, in breast cancer and so on, it's showing excellent results. And also because uh, in cytology, it's even better because uh, we know the good results, for instance, that were obtained many years ago by systems like PacNet that were very, very uh, basic uh, systems. So um, we are very confident that the new systems based on a neural network on deep learning will work much better. So there is a lot of expectation, I would say, in my specialty. In the pathology department in the hospital of Cadiz, we are uh, working with uh, uh, deep learning that we have developed with the engineers of the, of the university in order to, uh, on one side, detect the areas where uh, breast cancer is located so that we can do our, our quick uh, screening of the slides containing cancer. On the other side, we are correlating the patterns obtained uh, morphology on hematoxylin uh, and eosin in order to predict the possibility of those areas to contain mutations, gene mutations. That, so this means that also in cytology, uh, morphological patterns will be an excellent predictor of uh, mutations, of survival, and many other parameters that uh, still we have to study. The main impact that we expect from artificial intelligence in a short term is uh, on one side to shorten the screening times because it allows me to select, for instance, these uh, are the positive cases and I should concentrate on those, on those cases. On the other side, uh, to show up um, maybe things that I would miss uh, because I didn't have these tools. Artificial intelligence right now, we know, for instance, that is able to predict with morphology uh, certain mutations or certain, or certain uh, uh, genetic alterations and so on. Um, I think one of the important impact it may have is uh, being able to subclassify, to classify better the lesions. Right now, uh, we are used to, to say high grade lesions, low grade ASCUS, but biology is not always like that. It's more a continuous uh, grade of lesions. So, probably with artificial intelligence, being able to quantify it and, all, and all, uh, not only to put things in one specific place, but quantifying will be an important tool that will help us also to understand better the biology of, of, of cancer. My expectations for artificial intelligence in cytology are mainly that uh, we are able to integrate 
first in our legislation so uh, that in order to improve our artificial intelligence systems, our politicians, our governments, uh, local, regional governments, uh, understand that we need a lot of images, a lot of cases, a lot of patients to feed this artificial intelligence system in order to learn day by day, in order to learn from all the uh, thousands of cases that we are reviewing every every month. And uh, this is my, my main expectation, that uh, we will be able uh, to use all that information that is uh, in our archives uh, but and is not being used, but with artificial intelligence, all the power of, of all the, those data will show up. The benefit that we may have of being able to work with all these big data is on one side that the system uh, can improve the quality, the efficiency, the sensibility day by day because they are learning uh, day by day with the, with the new cases. So uh, if right now the system already have uh, quite are quite efficient and have high quality, it can also improve by being able to to use uh, all the big data that we are uh, generating and on the other on the other side also um, to be able uh, to show uh, more let's say objective information that also the patient uh, can have can have access to uh, right now for instance main of the data that we are offering to the patient in our results are based on human interpretation. Uh, if this is combined with automatic and objective in information, this will allow us to make reports that are more understandable to the patient because are more objective uh, decisions that we can make. In order to, for this uh, development of artificial intelligence to, to happen and to become a more extended uh, reality, uh, we need a clear networking between different uh, pathology departments. And this is possible right now with digital pathology in terms that uh, we are not isolated islands uh, making our own decisions, but uh, we can, on one side, we can support because uh, mm, uh, from one pathology department to the other, uh, because uh, we can make a second opinion, uh, we can, uh, for instance, redistribute uh, the work when there is some, uh, for instance, problems with the uh, cytotechnicians and so on. Uh, so uh, being able, for instance, to launch automated systems that allows uh, this preliminary analysis of these cases means uh, also that uh, we are able to offer this even to uh, small pathology departments that otherwise wouldn't have access to these technologies because they only have very small amounts of cytology and they're not able to have an artificial intelligence of their own for their own. No? Certainly nowadays there is a shortage of cytotechnicians, of cytoscreeners in, uh, in my region, for instance, in the province of, of Cadiz, there is only two cytotechnicians for a population of one, uh, 1.2 uh, million inhabitants. No? This means that uh, um, a lot of the effort is based on very speci uh, specialized resources like uh, pathologists. If we are able to automate all this screening part with artificial intelligence so that uh, cytotechnicians can become more efficient and uh, pathologists can also concentrate in another part of their work that is uh, more interesting for them than the doing cytoscreening. In order for artificial intelligence to really foster this development, um, there are some um, peculiarities, uh, for instance, 
with the validations of the systems. For instance, in order to obtain C marking, uh, it is clear that the system in some cases has to be closed. Uh, this means that uh, those systems that are able to learn from continuously from new cases, probably right now is more difficult for them to obtain CE marking than uh, those systems where the algorithms is already known. This is a technical and uh, this is a, a, a procedure that is established by the European Union in the regulations of in vitro diagnosis. And uh, since artificial intelligence is a tool that is under this umbrella of artificial intelligence, uh, right now, uh, regulation is not helping uh, too much. Uh, probably it will happen like in COVID, uh, that we have learned that the leg legislation is fine, but in some cases you have to be more flexible in order to obtain vaccines earlier and in order to obtain better solutions for cancer earlier. If we compare what's happening on FDA and the European Union, uh, we can see that there is quite a few uh, systems already approved by both, uh, by both um, FDA and CE marking. Uh, for instance, I can think of in pathology of about uh, 10 uh, algorithms that have already, already received this C marking, but uh, there is uh, probably a few more with uh, FDA, maybe 15 of them that I have already received uh, this release from the, from the FDA. But uh, FDA is, um, has a white paper where it states the importance of having uh, different classification rules or for artificial intelligence because the algorithms is not closed. And this flexibility that we are were already noticing in FDA, we haven't noticed it in the European regulation. I think the future is excellent for uh, image, ana uh, image analysis based on artificial intelligence and on digital uh, pathology because um, it has been demonstrated that the technology is already working and this is happening with only a few maybe thousands maybe le less than one million can you imagine when we include millions of cases in these systems probably the technology will be even more efficient than in the, than in it is today